I'd like to welcome Nicole Schwab to our session on financing Earth's future forests. Nicole is the co-head of the Platform for Accelerating Nature-Based Solutions at the World Economic Forum. Nicole, it's been quite a year on the forest agenda uh, and the trillion tree movement that we uh, saw in the film referred to just now is really gaining momentum. What can we expect from companies in terms of their response? Thank you, Jill. I think momentum is the key word. Uh, since we opened our global pledge process just a few months ago, we've seen a lot of interest and more importantly, we've seen that interest translated into commitments and into action on the ground. And so today we're very excited to be announcing the first 24 companies who have made a global pledge through Wanti.org to conserve, restore and grow over 2.5 billion trees in over 50 countries. And these pledges cover um, different types of restoration and reforestation programs, but also conservation of tropical forests, either through direct initiatives or also through um, new financial instruments like LEAF, for example. In addition, the pledges also include some supportive measures because we know that um, a lot is required in order to really grow forests. And the other thing which I'm very excited to announce today is that given the growing interest of blue carbon and the importance of coastlines and the role that mangroves can play on biodiversity, on climate, but also in terms of resilience and livelihoods, we're also launching a mangroves working group in partnership uh, with the Friends of Ocean Action as a place to raise ambition and action for mangroves, to focus on the blue carbon market and to bring in expertise on best practice in mangrove restoration. So these are two um, very exciting announcements that we have today. Thanks very much, Nicole. I want to dive in a little bit uh, into the detail on what requirements 1T.org has to help ensure that company commitments are credible and deliver their results for nature, climate and livelihoods. Yes, thank you, Jill. Um, that's obviously key. And we have three, there are three elements to this credibility. First, as a prerequisite for companies to make a pledge to 1T.org, um, we ask that the company also has a Paris aligned climate commitment, such as a science-based target or a net zero goal by or before 2050. So of course, climate and nature go hand in hand. So it's not only about making a pledge to 1T, but also having this climate commitment. That's the first point. Second, um, we also ask companies, and this is now visible on the 1T.org web website for each of the pledges, to describe how their pledge and how the activities that they plan to implement um, align with ecological and social responsibility. And so we, you, can, you can see the details and that's really an element uh, that is absolutely key for this credibility that you mentioned. And then finally, all the pledges will be uh, monitored on a yearly basis. We've created a working group together with IUCN, with WRI, with Restore, Tentry and others to look at the latest technological innovations, geospatial mapping capabilities, blockchain, and see how these tools can be made available to companies to inform their decision making and help them track on their commitments. So with these three, we feel that um, this, we are you know, in, a, in a very uh, solid position to say that these commitments are credible and um, to support companies on this journey, which is uh, going to be more and more important as the role of the private sector is key um, to achieve the targets that we have on restoration, on climate and on resilience. Thanks, Nicole. Before we dive into the panel, I'd like to ask our participants to take a quick poll uh, what you'll see in the chat at the moment is a link to Slido. We're asking you if you could just uh, click on that link, uh, including our panelists and any discussion leaders, and just e answer the question. And what we're asking is, where would you position your organization's forest investment strategy today? Is it nascent, early stage ideation, mid stage execution, or late stage scale. What this will do is it'll help inform us where we should place, place emphasis in our panel conversation. Okay. 
All right, let's display the results. Okay, uh, excellent. So we've got quite a few uh, participants in the ideation stage looking at options. Uh, we've got uh, some in the execution stage, 25%, and then scale uh, uh, is the smaller proportion nascent. So very few companies uh, are, have no internal discussions uh, yet or just curious about the topic. So that's, that's good for us to keep in mind as we move forward. Uh, okay. All right, so with that, I think what we've seen is our audience poll shows that you know about 58% of the audience is curious about the topic or exploring options, but haven't yet made a commitment uh, to forests. And I think uh, with this group in mind, I'd like to turn to Anirban, uh, who is Mahindra's Chief Sustainability Officer. Well done, well, welcome, Anirban. Um, we know that Mahindra made a very big decision 15 years ago to invest in forests through the Hariyali program, where you grow one million trees uh, that are new tr fruit trees every year. Um, and at the time, it was really unprecedented. How did you come to this decision from Mahindra's perspective? Thank you for the question, Jill. Uh, you know, in India, we've uh, acknowledged the fact that deforestation has been a big problem, and not just for the world, but certainly for the nation. And uh, when we were in school and college, we used to discuss this all the time. On the 60th anniversary of uh, the organization, uh, we committed to plant a million trees a year to, uh, as, a, you know, as a contribution uh, towards our forestation. And very quickly, we learned that social forestry was the way to go because it had many benefits beyond just planting the tree. Thanks, Sanaban. Uh, great to hear uh, a little bit more of that background from you. So it sounds like that was primarily a corporate social responsibility investment. Is that still the case today? That's how it started. Uh, over time, we learned that the carbon removals from the trees are very important for the climate solution. We are looking to scale uh, the plantation program. Uh, but yes, it started as CSR, and we realize its impact on uh, society and climate uh, now. Interesting. That's uh, an experience that we see from many of the companies that are working with the 1T.org corporate alliance. A lot come in through the CSR uh, approach and then recognize some of the other benefits, carbon included. Perhaps I can go to you, uh, Pablo Machado, uh, the Director of Corporate Relations and Sustainability at Susano. Welcome. Uh, Susana is a company that's working on pulp and paper in Brazil. Uh, as a part of 1T.org's pledges, Susano has committed to connect dispersed forests for biodiversity conservation in the Cerrado, the Atlantic forests, and the Amazon. Uh, why does this commitment make good sustainability sense and also good business sense from your perspective? Hi, Jill. Uh, thank you for the question. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, I am super enthusiastic about uh, this goal in particular because it combines uh, three different things. It combines business, it combines shared value and collaboration. Uh, what we aim for with, uh, with this goal is to connect 500,000 hectares of fragmented forest creating uh, biodiverse corridors in three different biomes. Why does it make uh, business sense? Because we combine planted forest with native forest in a new uh, way of managing our forests uh, along our supply chain. Second, um, it delivers, it, it delivers uh, share value because uh, we, we will restore degraded areas and it, it's done in a collaborative manner because we are doing that within our own land, but also together with uh, farmers and other third parties. 
So uh, this is a, a, a project that uh, will uh, certainly engage many, many different stakeholders all over the country. Excellent. Thanks, Pablo. Very interesting to hear that um, angle looking both at the sustainability, but also what makes sense in terms of the forest that you grow as, as a company. Um, I'd like to uh, reach out now to Suzanne uh, DiBianca, the Chief Impact Officer at Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce has a commitment to conserve, restore and grow 100 million trees up until 2030, a very big uh, commitment from, from your end. And just in the context of Pablo's uh, uh, message related to the Amazon and some of these tropical uh, areas, I'd like to dive in a little bit more to the LEAF um, initiative, which is, seems to be a new form of innovative financing mechanism for tropical forests and particularly for conservation. Uh, why did S Salesforce go uh, in that direction, Suzanne? Hi, thank you, Ajil, and congratulations to 1T.org on your exciting announcement this morning of 2.5 billion uh, trees as part of your launch. Just um, fantastic work, and thank you for having us here today. And as it relates to the to the Leaf Coalition specifically, um, you know we know that tropical forests are critical, um, and the role that they play in sustainable development. And we see the um, uh, the unfortunate and consistent uh, degradation of tropical forests all around the world. And, you know, we know that we used to have, you know, six trillion trees on our planet um, before the onset of agriculture and are now down to three trillion trees. So, you know, we know that we need to mobilize, which the LEAF Coalition is doing, um, at least a billion dollars for large scale tropical forest protection and sustainable development. And really, I think it's the kind of bold leadership um, and climate ambition that we're going to need to meet the Paris targets. Um, we know tropical forests in particular are, are one of humanity's most important and valuable assets and really need everyone to be part of the solution. And so for Salesforce, we really try to take a holistic approach um, to our conservation, restoration and, and growing programs and really look all around the world and see what kind of financing mechanisms um, can come into play to, to really make a difference and make an impact at scale. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh, on the topic of your holistic approach, I want to dive into another biome beyond tropical forests, the mangroves. We've just launched the Mangroves Working Group and Salesforce is an inaugural member. What's the rationale from your perspective of investing in mangroves? Again, another you know key component of the solution, um, ocean ecosystems um, also critical. We know the mangroves in some cases sequester up to five times more carbon um, than other kinds of, of trees. We know they're a critical food source for many com communities and protection for you know ocean ecosystems with with fish and storm protection also. So you know as we're thinking about climate justice. Um, and we have to think again about, you know, not only what's on land, um, but what's, you know, in the water and, and how it's improving and supporting livelihoods. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh, great to get that perspective and see the holistic approach that companies are taking. Uh, as you mentioned, a critical aspect and every biome, every location is different, which requires a different kind of approach. Uh, in terms of generating results. So I want to dive into the 42% of our audience who, who mentioned that they're in the execution and stale, scale phase. Um, and we know that it's not possible just to put a tree in the ground and leave it there and hope that it'll uh, achieve maturity, that there's, there's quite a bit more that's needed there. Now, Anne Urban, you mentioned uh, the social side of responsibility in terms of your investments in India. And we recognize that countries like India, like the Sahel, uh, the livelihoods component is, is quite important. So what is it that, in your view, that you really feel propels that long-term survival rate of a tree? You know, the survival rate of a tree depends critically on where you plant it and who's going to look after it. So in our initial years, uh, we did a lot of experiments and survival rates varied from something as low as 30% 
to something as high as 95%. And the key to the whole thing was where are you planting the tree and who's looking after it? And this is why we worked with the indigenous people, tribals as they're called uh, here in India, and uh, planted trees on their land and uh, because they would look after the trees and we achieve survival rates in excess of 90% on their land now. Uh, there are so many other benefits they get from it because they've been, um, they've been coffee cultivators. At one time, the coffee was not great quality, but it was simple coffee. But now, because of all the effects of the fruit trees planted and the biodynamic farming practices that have been brought to them, that coffee is now available in France and Australia and Ireland and various other countries of the world. So it, it's many experiences. One learning, you must have people looking after the trees that you're planting and not just randomly plant them anywhere and hope that they will survive. It just doesn't happen. Thanks, Samir Brown, for that. I want to turn it over to Pablo because I, I want to explore a little bit more this kind of quality question. Uh, it's really interesting to see that the coffee uh, the, um, or the, the, the idea of a crop being higher quality as a result of uh, restoration in, in the surrounding agricultural area. And I just want to understand from your perspective and Susanna's perspective, do you see that synergy between the sustainability and the uh, actual productivity of, of, of your plantations? Absolutely, Jill, and, and, and this is a, a very uh, interesting uh, feature of, uh, of uh, our business. Uh, uh, we realize that uh, having planted trees intertwined with native forest would make uh, our, pl uh, our plantations be more productive. Uh, and this is uh, super important for a couple of different reasons. Um, uh, the first one is if we are more productive uh, in our uh, plantations, this means that we need less land. But this also means that we need less natural uh, resources and that we emit less carbon uh, uh, for our production. Uh, second, uh, when we do what we call our mosaic plantation, which is, uh, as I said, uh, planted trees uh, intertwined with uh, native forest, uh, we enhance a lot biodiversity by creating great masses of forest uh, where um, uh, animals and inhabitants can uh, uh, take benefit of uh, all that ecosystem. Uh, and uh, thirdly, uh, when, we, when we do that, we also see improvement in terms of water availability. So uh, it's, uh, it's a super win-win type of game. Uh, one thing which is also very interesting is the carbon capturing. Uh, uh, the more productive our forest is, uh, the more carbon it captures. So uh, uh, we are already today uh, climate positive also because of that. Uh, we capture more carbon uh, than we emit, including scopes one, two, and three, which is a, a, a great thing. Fascinating to see how wildlife corridors can help to propel the biodiversity, but also result in bottom line um, improvements for, for your businesses. And I think this is going to be a, a topic of conversation for us going forward, uh, because the reality is that we need to make the case for both. Uh, and while historically the CSR responsibility has been a driver, we're seeing that actually the pie is growing and that there are more and more opportunities to invest for more different kinds of reasons. Uh, so really interesting to dive into that a little bit more. I want to come back to a point that Anirban mentioned just about indigenous communities. Pablo, are you seeing in the Amazon and uh, the Cerrado um, Atlantic forests, uh, you know, what's that relationship with the indigenous communities and, and how do you help to nurture that? Uh, yeah, some, uh, some of our mills are indeed uh, close to indigenous communities. Uh, and uh, we, we have a very good relationship with them in many different uh, ways. Uh, one thing which is uh, very interesting is first, of course, uh, uh, they, they have 
their own um, uh, culture, traditions, and, and the way of exploring the land. Uh, uh, some of uh, the tribes, they also want to produce. Uh, so one very important thing is opening uh, the right dialogue with them and uh, understanding better uh, how we can interact. Uh, just to give you an example, in the state of Espírito Santo in Brazil, uh, we have a partnership with uh, an indigenous tribe uh, whereby they, they use a small portion of their land to produce eucalyptus and they sell this eucalyptus to us, we help them produce. Uh, this generates revenues to them. Uh, at the same time, uh, we provide education uh, to them. So uh, uh, we build schools and, and hired and trained uh, uh, teachers. Uh, so uh, 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 the ones who want to uh, take uh, let's say, more formal and classical uh, 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 education. They have, uh, uh, they have access to that. They have access to, to income generation at the same time that they uh, uh, also have all their traditions and their land fully respected. So this is a, a, a reason of, uh, uh, of proudness to us. Thank you for that. It does seem as though the long-term relationship with those who are on the ground, irrespective of the geography, is really critical as we're looking to, to move forward and ensure that these trees are standing when they reach maturity. So uh, really good to see the ways in which this is being done in different geographies. Um, and for anyone who is still in the ideation phase and looking to invest, I think that's uh, something really to take away from this discussion. Suzanne, I'd like to come to you now just to look a little bit at what's happening uh, later this week. On Saturday, it looks as though we're going to have a 24-hour event live with Global, with Global Citizen Live. Uh, and what can we expect from that? What are the plans? Yeah, thank you, Jill. I'm, I'm really thrilled to... Um to announce that the Global Citizen has taken on our mantle of 1T.org as part of their uh, events coming up. So it's a, it's a live broadcast, 24 hours, six continents. Um, we have uh, a number, we'll have uh, Dr. Jane Goodall joining us. I'll, I'll have to give a shout out also to her. Um, she launched something this week called Trees for Jane. This is a way for individuals to take action. Um, I would encourage everyone, we're sending it out en masse to our employees um, as well. It's a great way to sort of activate the individuals in your life and honor such an important um, person in this, in this world. Um, so Global Citizen will be a, a great event. Jill, I'm, I'm so glad that they've taken up the 1T.org mantle. We have 50 companies that we've been able to mobilize that have made either Race to Zero or 1T.org commitments. And they'll be featured also at the, at the Global Citizen Live event. It'll be live somehow they're doing it um, in Central Park in New York City uh, with over 70,000 uh, people there um, in a hopefully very safe way. So please join us in the, in the live broadcast. Super, Suzanne. And, and one thing I want to dive into a little bit more there is uh, the relationship between the emissions and the climate agenda and the forest and nature agenda. Why are these two important to deal with simultaneously as uh, uh, Global Citizen Live is doing? Well, I think it's a front of the hand, back of the hand conversation, Jill. So, you know, representing the corporate sector, we know we can't just talk about offsets. We can't talk about um, kind of paying our way out of whatever, um, you know, we emit. So we have to make um, bold goals around emission reductions. We said uh, here at Salesforce that we will, our absolute emissions will come down by 50% um, to our 2019 baseline by 2030. Um, we see many corporates making bold emission reduction targets. Uh, at the same uh, note, we're a growth company. We continue to acquire great companies like Slack, which we did this year. So, you know, we'll continue to, to grow our company knowing that we'll never uh, be able to get down to 
you know, exactly zero uh, in our operations, but we know that we have to offset what we what we do emit through high quality carbon projects. Uh, trees are really critical in that strategy, you know, as are oceans, for example, which you which you mentioned, clean cook stoves, um, you know, other other projects that there are to help us kind of keep in balance. Um, you know, what we are both you know, emitting and, and how we're growing. And this week at Dreamforce, I'm here in San Francisco in a hotel. It's uh, been a long week here uh, that we did. We did a live in-person conference. Uh, so my voice is a little scratchy at this point, but fantastic week. And, you know, we have we announced that Salesforce is a net zero now company. So we accelerated both our uh, commitment to um, emissions reductions, and we pulled in our entire value chain and and, and took it from 2030 to 2021. Um, but in addition to that, we also announced the acceleration of our trees commitment. And so you had mentioned 100 million trees we had pledged uh, over a decade, and we've accelerated that. We're now at 42 million trees just in the first 18 months. So that's almost halfway to our goal. So we know we just, uh, as a as a sector, as a planet, we just know we have to accelerate on every angle. Well, wow, very inspiring to see how that is ramping up so quickly, and also to see that the scale is actually possible. And that is something that we've learned also, I think, from, from the 1T.org community, is that the issue is not capacity. The capacity exists. There are implementing partners ready and available to uh, absorb these resources uh, if they are invested and that they are able to do that in a in a thoughtful way uh, which does have the potential for long-term results at the same time with the wildfires and uh, all the destruction that we're seeing uh, the opportunity continues to grow so uh, very inspiring to see what salesforce is doing uh, on uh, and b building the the pipeline for for many other companies i think to to get involved Perhaps uh, as we wrap up this section of the discussion, I'd just like to come to each of you to get a little bit of a sense if you were speaking to a company or someone within a company, an employee who you know, is at the beginning of the journey, either you know, looking at options or just starting to have initial discussions, uh, what advice would you have to them uh, in terms of making the next right step um, in terms of your experience to date and, and all that you've learned through the process. Perhaps I'll start with Pablo. Sure. Uh, uh, the first thing uh, I would advise is uh, pair your business strategy with your sustainability strategy because otherwise it, it, it will not get uh, scaled over time. Second, uh, listen to stakeholders. Uh, uh, the stakeholders tell what they expect and, uh, and they challenge us. And these challenges are good for us to develop our, um, our uh, own strategy. And third, create the right tools within your organization. Uh, make, uh, uh, make your analysis of investments, of uh, growth, uh, also include uh, the environmental dimension, uh, and that will certainly uh, lead you to success. Thanks, Pablo. Aneban. So in addition to everything Pablo has said, all of us know the problem. Set the right goals, pick up the right solutions. There's a lot of learning out there implement the solutions in the correct way so that impact happens and we are all able to deliver on the solutions to the problems that we have. Suzanne. Yeah, same in addition to the, to the wise words of Pablo and Anuban, I would say, you know, what is your superpower? So um, our superpower is technology and We've been thinking a lot about how do we, you know, make this relevant in the climate conversation. We built a product called Sustainability Cloud. Um, it's what we do. It's what we know how to do. It enables our customers to manage, measure, reduce their own carbon. We'll have an exchange on there. Um, it will be its investor grade data. We're hearing, you know, from our customers that they 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 want to they they want to get going and they don't really know where to start. So. 
you know, like Pablo said, what is our business strategy? You know, our, our business strategy is all around customer relationship management. Carbon relationship management is how we're thinking about it in this context. Super, thanks very much for that. Uh, very exciting to hear technology, thoughtful implementation, ecological responsibility, social responsibility, and ultimately impact. We're going to transition to the next piece of our discussion um, and thank all of our speakers for the comments and, and input that they've shared with us. Before we transition, I just want to, uh, again, in the chat, there's a link. The question we're asking you is, what is one thing you took away from the discussion just now? I invite all the panelists and uh, participants to uh, put your thoughts in there. You have 25 characters. If you need a little bit more, you can uh, enter multiple uh, entries. But here is an opportunity just to share what it is that you feel you've taken away. <laughs> 